let's give another round of applause for Debbie Delgado, Joy Chudikoff, Michelle DeKindersmith, Jennifer Bourne, and for all of you for being here and taking the time. One thing I'd like to clarify real quickly, um, a couple of questions, uh, the, qu the question that came up a couple of times was, were accommodations included in the retreat? <laughs> no. No. Accommodations are not included in the retreat. 497, hello? No. Um, so, right. So they're not included. It includes your meals, all your meals on Friday and Saturday. Uh, it includes the cocktail reception we're doing on Thursday, which will be a ton of fun to get to know each other. It includes all the bonuses I gave today, but it does not include your actual hotel room. So just to clarify that. If anybody has any other questions or, you know, or your flight. <laughs> yeah, this is not all expenses paid. <laughs> yeah, not a bad price, exactly. For a price, it could be. Okay, so what I want to do now is there may be some burning questions that you have as we've gone through, um, or after they've come off the stage, you've said, gosh, I really would like to know X. So now is your time to grill them. What? <laughs> Whatever questions you have, anything that you want to know, anything you need some extra help with, um, BB has the mic. So if you raise your hand, she will bring it around. If you want to direct your question to one person or multiple people, that's fine. Hello. I'll get us started. Um, would you agree that that a woman's are are woman's mindset is sometimes a barrier to our success. <laughs> and uh, could you provide us with uh, techniques or strategies um, to the group about how to overcome those? I love the fact that our resident attorney started with, would you agree? <laughs> did, you, did you hear that? <laughs> Always swaying the jury. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Mindset especially for women, because we wear so many hats and have so many roles, is very important. And so I would say that there's a couple really easy things that you can do that, that I have done that have really helped me keep a strong mindset. And the first one is um, to really make sure that as much time as possible is spent with what I call nutritious people rather than toxic people. This is a huge part of keeping the proper mindset with people who are really feeling like the glass is half full instead of half empty. Um, another great tip on your environment is just keeping your environment clear and clean. So what I mean by that is be, I, don't, I won't say be organized because I'm not organized. I have to have someone come into my office and actually organize me because I'm not an organized person. Um, but you will be amazed at how it affects your mindset when you are working and living in an area that is calming and that's clean and organized because it keeps a clear mind. And lastly, Kathy talked a little bit about it in her thing, is boundaries. I have very, you know, very strong boundaries and I find that women who are really successful and, and continue to grow their success um, have really strong boundaries around their time and around the people and around the events that they commit to. So those are mine. I would also say that uh, to stop looking at what other people are doing. The biggest, one of the biggest things that I noticed that affected my mindset when I was, even now, working on my business is when I'm looking at what other people who do what I do are doing. Because you can't help, you start to compare, mm -hmm. which is like recipe for failure, right? Because what you don't know is their mission may be different. Their goals may be different. Their life may be different. You know, it happens a lot, especially for uh, moms who own businesses, because you're, you're looking at other people and you're thinking, gosh, they seem to be getting it done so much faster. But then you realize they're single and they don't have kids. They have a totally different life. If they want to work all the time, they can. Their priorities are different. And it's also to look at, you know, to be careful not to get caught up in looking what other people are doing because their goals may be different than yours. You know, their goal may be to build a giant empire and build a huge team and have tons of people and, you know, bring on employees. And your goal may be to build a freedom-based business that allows you to vacation and spend time with your kids. And your, your goals are totally different. So I would say, you know, for me, it's been tuning all that stuff out, focusing on what I do, what I do best, and who I serve, and staying in that, you know, staying in that area of focus. Right. Debbie, did you have something you wanted to say? 
I agree with what everybody else has said. The environment is so important. Um, and I would add to that that to really be focused every day on what it is that you're trying to create because I think the more you focus on that, the less things are gonna just start popping up and you're gonna get caught up in them to draw you away from that. And also, I, I mean, I do agree with what you said. As women, we really have been programmed to take care of everyone else. And that really can get in the way when it comes to growing our own business and achieving our own dream. And in, in addition to what Jennifer um, just said, you know, one of the things that I tell my clients when they're first really getting started on their brilliant idea and their path is, first of all, be careful who you tell about it <laughs> because their doubts and fears will automatically come up directed at you. But secondly, um, don't expect other people to understand your dream. It was, that purpose was not given to them. And I think we set ourselves up for disappointment when we actually expect other people to understand, even people who live in your house. Amen. <laughs> so if, you know, if you share and somebody does get it and they act as your believing eyes and, and they say, I know you can do it, that's just a bonus. But don't expect it and then you won't be disappointed. I think Michelle wanted to comment. Mm -hmm. All right, so we talked about the fact that we're community builders, right? And Unfortunately, some aspect of that is when we are part of the community, we want everyone to be the same. And that means as women, it can be very difficult for us to allow ourselves to stand out, right? So that's a big piece of it. Another piece is the multitasking versus single focus. So if you think about this, women multitask. So let's say we need to make a sales call, we need to work on our website, we need to work on our copy, we need to look at our finances and send our invoices. In any of those four tasks, they're all on your mind. If you hit a stumbling block in one of them, you'll just go, oh, that's okay. I won't worry about that technology piece on the website right now because I know I need to go do my invoices. So every time you hit a stumbling block, your tendency as a multitasker is to jump to something else because you can still make forward progress. The problem is that none of those four things ever gets done because you keep bouncing from one to another, which is why I advocate so much for the single focus. And in terms of what you can do for yourself, I think the most important thing, and it's come up here a couple of times, is to set goals, but to actually write them down and break them down. So you should know how much money you want to make this year, and you should have an idea of how you're going to do that, and you should be looking at that every single month. Because if you just have this dream of increased income and it's never written down on paper, then you can't design a plan or get any help to help you close that gap. So plan, 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 ladies. And think about the money. Okay. Should we move to another question? There's is there one in the back? Yeah. I'm just curious if all of you got together and planned your outfits <laughs> and seating and arrangements. <laughs> if we planned our outfits, we get a Not wardrobe exactly. question from, from the... <laughs> Do we look hot up here? <laughs> Woo! That's funny. <laughs> Actually, purple? Oh my gosh, that is. <laughs> Okay, that is hilarious. God, we are women on a mission. <laughs> that's right, that's right. That's right, exactly. Another question, do we have somebody else? I see Julianne Stiddick at the very back. By the way, that reminds me, I think there's still a couple of names I was supposed to announce to for prizes, so. So I, I too am impressed at the sy symmetry and the color up there. <laughs> Being um, that you are the style gal, you know. <laughs> so anyway, um, we all have bad days at work. And what I wanted to know is if anybody would be willing to share 
what they do on a really bad day at work? Cry? Yeah. <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> you cry is, to allow yourself to cry and to yeah. get some of that out, I think is, is brilliant. Um, for me, I think I just have to check in with myself. And sometimes it's like, just shut up and do it, right? And that's what I tell myself, and that's kind of the single focus, get it done, suck it up thing. Um, but sometimes I just have to let myself sit on the couch and stop, right? And if you check in with yourself, you'll know. And it's perfectly okay. It's part of the freedom of being a business owner to say, this day really sucks. I can't get anything done. I'm just going to let myself breathe. But don't do that more often than not, mm -hmm. right? I pick up the phone and I call my accountability partner or I call my girlfriend, who happens to be my VA too. Um, I am not one who does very well with just holding it in and not getting it out. And, and as solopreneurs, you know, we're stuck in our offices and um, sometimes it is hard to share that and the frustration and something really bad goes down. Um, and I'm one that needs to talk about it. Talk me off the ledge. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I was going to say similar. You know, you have those days where you, if you keep it to yourself, it tends to get worse. Right? So you keep thinking about it, and then it gets worse, and then it gets worse, and you get more upset. So I would be totally lying if I said there weren't days where I called Joy, and I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> or I call yeah. Kathy, and I'm like, holy, mm. yeah. <laughs> you don't even know, because you have to get it off your chest, right? And then immediately you feel better about it, and because you had somebody to share who gets it. Gets it. There you go. You know, and they know you're not necessarily looking for them to agree. Or to, you know, but just to say that, yeah, that sucks, <laughs> you know, because you need to have those people that you can call on those bad days. Um, I would also say on recommendation from, I work with my husband, so he sees my rage in my office. Kickboxing has done wonders <laughs> for that. Bad days, just work it out, kick some stuff, you feel way better. Um, agree that picking up the phone and calling a trusted source is really helpful. And the one thing I do want to say is that this is it's a great question. It's fresh in my mind because I had one of those days yesterday. Um, and if any time, if you're growing a business and you're a solo entrepreneur, I think most of the women out there think it's just happening to them, right? Don't we think it's just happening to us, especially if we don't have a partner or someone to call in, call on? It's happening to all of us. You heard what Beth Shaw said. She said at least, what, once a week she's feeling this? And uh, so I, I always lean on people that I know get me and understand where I'm coming from. Two other things that I do is I get out of the office. We have a tendency to think if we just sit there and keep looking at the laptop, the problem's going to get solved. It doesn't, ladies. It just gets worse. I get out of the office. I grab a cup of coffee, and I head out to the bluffs near my house. A walk helps. And the other thing that I do is I have a very strong meditation practice. Um, I practice, I meditate every day, and again, maybe it's only five minutes, but that really helps ground me down and really look at the big picture rather than the fact that the dishwasher broke and the laptop's not working and one of the kids came home sick from school. That really helps me, like, bring it all back to center, so. I love, I love the question and I love the answers because I think you're getting like a really good mix of introvert and extrovert answers to this <laughs> question, which is yeah, great, thanks. which is great because different things are going to work for different people. Um, a couple of things that I do, one, um, and I've learned the hard way, is when I recognize what's going on is I stop resisting it. Because one of the things that happens when you have a bad day or a bad moment is some of us, you know, who've worked so hard on growing ourselves is we immediately go into resistance about it. Oh my gosh, you know, what would my clients think if they saw me having this moment? And you start to resist it and it gets bigger. You've all heard anything that you resist persists or anything that you resist actually grows. So I try to pull myself out of resistance and really kind of surrender, surrender to the moment. Because the minute you stop resisting, you're going to actually feel it, whatever it is. And then it's, it just wants to be seen and, and noticed. And when you just surrender to it, 
It says, I'm seen, I'm noticed, now I can go away. But sometimes it takes a while for you to get to that point of realizing you need to surrender. And another one is kind of like what Joy said, is um, really changing my energy and changing what I'm doing to change the energy. So, you know, if, if I'm depressed, maybe I, you know, I need to go watch a funny movie or, you know, read something that's really funny. Or if I'm feeling one of those powerless moments in my business of, you know, can I really do this? Am I really enough? Am I an imposter? Um, it might be to get up and literally change your energy by stomping around your house and, you know, yelling out what you know to be true. You know, that you are here to help people and that everything you want is possible for you. So literally f changing your physical energy can also shift it. Okay. See a question right here? Okay, Joy, you had talked about the imposter syndrome. Yeah. And it was interesting because in chatting with people afterwards, it resonated with a lot of people. So did, did you guys suffer from imposter syndrome? And if so, when did you get over it? Are you over it? Because sometimes I feel like a little kid and everybody else is a big kid. It's like, wow, they're so knowledgeable. Yeah. Yeah. So how uh, this, mor that? this morning at about 7 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> You're not pushing yourself hard enough. Yeah, I mean, it's you, you have to understand that fear is a natural partner to creativity. Fear is an it's it's when you get when you get creative, fear is with you in the next moment. And this no one is nobody gets to escape this in the entire room. You know, we all have it. And so, anytime that you're getting ready to do something that stretches you like Kathy's slinky exercise a little bit and, and you feel that fear, which I have to tell you, I've been speaking for 15 years, but it still comes up before I go before any group. Um, you, you have to honor that fear, but not let, it, not let it overcome you, okay? You have to honor the fear that you have. I tell my children that don't, th don't say, that don't, I'm not gonna tell my children not to be afraid because they feel fear about something, you know, whatever it is in their lives, go ahead and feel it, let it move through you, but let's look at solutions on how we can move through it and just keep going. And that's what we have to do as business owners, you have to keep just finding solutions. And one of the best ways to move through imposter syndrome is to be surrounded by people who champion you, who believe in you, who think you hung the moon, you know, these people who are, love your mission and support you, that will help you move through any sort of imposter syndrome that you might be feeling. And just, um, you know, one of the things that I always say to people is that the, you know, the physicians, do we have any doctors in here? Physicians? Uh, um, you know, the doctors, I, I believe the doctor's first creed or their first, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, their first prayer, if you will, is first do no harm. And I always say that when I go come before you this morning, when I did my own prayer and meditation, was like, just first, I, I, I'm not here to harm you. I'm here to help you. So how bad could it really be, you know? So, I mean, that's, that's what I would say about imposter syndrome. I would just say, I think everybody feels like that at some point. If you, if you are in this room and you say you've never felt like that, I say, liar. <laughs> <laughs> or you're not stretching yourself. If you've never felt it, it means that you, you're just a mere shadow of who you really are supposed to become. Exactly. Because when you push yourself to get to that, ne ne that next level, you know, it's when you step out of your comfort zone that you start to feel like that. When you try something bigger is that comes up of like, oh, my gosh, people are going to think, you know, who the heck, who, you know, who are you to do that? You know, or there, somebody's going to find out I don't really know what I'm doing, or I just have this little business out that I run out of my house, or, <laughs> you know, whatever. It's like, the, you, you, all these different things come up, but they come up when you're pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. So to, it's to look at that and to honor the fact that that means that you're pushing. So when you, when you feel that coming up and you start to feel that way, the easiest thing for me is to look at that and be like, huh, that must mean I'm doing something big, Right? And then it is to have somebody who's near you all the time to say, you totally don't give yourself enough credit. You're way better than that. Do you know, like, what are you thinking? You're crazy. 
you know, those kind of things to have somebody that's going to be that champion as well. You know, it's a big deal to have that reinforcement because you can tell yourself how great you are all the time, but sometimes you just need to hear it from somebody else. Yeah. So true. I think everybody's right that we do all feel this. It's particularly true of women. Um, just two thoughts for ways that I uh, overcome that when I'm feeling it. The first is to just, I close my eyes, take a deep breath, and ask myself, what's really happening right now? Odds are, nothing's really happening right now, which immediately makes me realize that whatever that is is just a thought, right? And if it's a thought, I can choose a different thought. Um, and then similarly, along the lines of having a network of people around you, I keep something in my office that I call a love box. And any compliment, any wonderful email, anything anybody ever says, sends me that tells me I'm great, it goes in there. And if I'm stuck, I open it up and I read three or four of those and it's amazing what it will do to your confidence. Oh well, yeah, bad day? Read your testimonials page on your website. That'll cheer you up. That's a good one, I like that. Another question. Any other questions? If you had to say one thing that was your best advice or your biggest contributor to your success, what would that be? I would say to pick your point of view. If you look at every leader, every thought leader, every person of influence has a point of view. You know, they put that stake in the sand and say, this is what I do, this is what I'm good at, this is what I believe in, and this is what I'm going to teach. Uh, they don't say, and, and I use the example that way, you know, when I first started, uh, blogging is an easy way to kind of talk about this. When you first often start a blog, when I first started blogging, lots of my articles were super, like, very politically correct. You could do this, but you could do that. I didn't want to make anybody mad. I was going to tell you what to do. But it was my business didn't start to just take on a life of its own and grow like rapidly mad until I took that stake in the sand and said, no, this is how you do it. This is what you should do. These are the steps that you should take because this is what works. Like leave all that other crap behind. So it's finding your voice and not being afraid to take that stand, take that point of view and use your voice. Because the other thing is along the same lines is the more that I tried to be PC and like, you know, very professional all the time and all of that, people can tell when it's not who you are authentically. You know, but when I get up on stage and I, you know, say shit or like whatever, you know, and I tell you stuff sucks, like that is who I am when I work with you. People know, they get that that's exactly what you're getting and that trust and that connection is made much, much faster it's made much more powerfully. And when you show up in your business exactly as who you are, and you take that stake, and you take that point of view, you know, people want to be led. They want to be told what to do. They don't want to have to guess. They don't want to have to make a decision. They want it to be easy. Tell me what to do, and I'll do it. So you'll find that the more you just embrace who you are and take that point of view and share it, the more successful you're going to be. That's a great question. Just to pick one, I guess, I guess the one that I'm going to choose at this moment, at the, in this moment in time is, um, and Kathy shared it with you earlier today on the slide, my favorite quote ever by Einstein is, vision without execution is merely hallucination. And I believe that, I think we as women think about things too long. Uh, so vision is not a problem for us. We can hold the vision for ourselves and for other people. So the, what I, the one thing that I would say is to just get off your butt and do it. Take imperfect action because I'm still trying to figure out what perfect looks like. I don't know what perfect looks like. I don't. What do you, does anybody here know? No. Right? From our brand strategist here. I see all the brand strategists in the room clapping. So take imperfect action because people don't know what perfect is anyway and just take, get a vision, get an idea and just do it. Take action on it one step in front of the other. That to me is the most important thing this afternoon. 
That was a wonderful question. Thank you. And I think the most important thing that I've done is I've continued to say yes. When you decide what you want, opportunities to create it will start coming your way. Some of them will be scary as hell. They will feel too big to you. They'll feel too soon to you. And you'll feel, you may feel like you're not ready. Say yes anyway. You're being shown the way. It may not look the way you thought it would look. When you talk to anybody that's somewhere you want to be, they could have never predicted the series of events that got them there. I've seen this with myself. I see it with my clients. Keep saying yes, even when you're scared. I think for me, it's um, being the implementer. <clears throat> I am someone who does not let grass grow under my feet. And if I have a, an idea, and my <laughs> master, my partner is going <laughs> to agree on this one, I implement it sometimes too soon, but at least I make a step forward. And um, if I was stuck and not moving forward and always stopping because of the fear and not sure who am I and the imposter syndrome and I don't know and blah, you know, I'd never get anything done. Um, I am one who has taken some risks and certainly some of them have not panned out. But that's the cost of doing business. That's the whole idea of being successful. You're not going to get to the success without having to take risks and have failures. And I've had failures. But um, yeah, getting out there, doing it, moving forward, and uh, implementing. Uh, for me, it's about really knowing what your value is. Um, I learned this lesson the hard way. <laughs> there, when I started my consulting practice, I thought that my clients worked with me because we were very fast and we were very inexpensive. And I got to a place in my life where I was working 80 hours a week for about six months, and then I broke because I was getting so much work, because I was fast and inexpensive. And then I had to say, I can't get that done that fast. I need to charge you more money. And what I came to understand was they weren't buying fast and cheap. They were buying the fact that I really cared, right? That is my value. It's different for every person here, but for me, the value I bring is that I care. And now that I know that that's what I'm doing, I become more successful in business, right? Because I know that's what, the, what my clients really want. I think we have time for one more. One more question. Um, if no one else is going to ask it. Oh. Oh, you had a question. I did. But. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> you can ask us tonight <laughs> on the way to dinner. OK. <laughs> So when you up-leveled your business as you took these leaps, what do you feel for each one of you was the biggest surprise when you made it to the next level? So that we can, you know, it's stuff that most of us probably don't know that we don't know, but what was the biggest surprise you found that's good, bad, or indifferent? There are so many lessons you learn, right, as you, as you grow. But here's, here's one that was true for me. Um, was realizing just how much uh, the subconscious thoughts hold us back. So there came a point in my business where I was very stuck in terms of how much incremental money I was making. And working with a business coach, I uncovered that I had, was currently earning about $200,000 a year. My dad had never earned more than that. And when I got that, oh my god, my subconscious mind is what's holding me back, then I blew past it really fast. So it's the subconscious stuff. I think when I've been successful and made it to one level, it's like, yay, that wasn't so bad. What's next? And uh, it, it, yeah, that it, it wasn't that, yeah, it took me a journey, that it, it took a while to get there, and it took perseverance, and it took that no matter what attitude, and it's hard work. It's a hard work being an entrepreneur. 
for sure, and to get to the next level. But when you actually get there and the joy that it brings, and then it's like, okay, let's keep going. What's next? I would say talking biggest surprise is that when you finally get there and you celebrate getting there with the people that surround you and they say, it's about time. <laughs> <laughs> and you realize that everybody around you saw more than you saw in yourself. It took you longer to realize it and take that action. And that the people around you, they saw it the whole time. You, they were just waiting for you to do it. So it's kind of that surprise of like, wait a second, what? It's about time. I've been working my butt off. Like, yeah, but, you know, they, they see it when you don't. You know, the people around you see in you a lot of things that you're, in, you, you're incapable of seeing in yourself because it's you. You know, you're just so close to what you're in every day that I think that was the biggest surprise is that everybody else says it's about time. You know, that, that you do have this, and it's just kind of that reinforcement of the fact that there is community. There's people that are championing, 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 championing whatever, yeah. you, <laughs> that, are, uh, that are cheering you on right. that you don't even know are cheering you on and that are looking at what you're doing and waiting for you to get there and they're excited for you and you don't even realize it. So the fact that just by being you and by doing what you're doing, you're inspiring other people who are watching that without even realizing it. I'm still, I'm still giving feedback. I'm giving really authentic I think the biggest surprise has been for me at each new level is that I am capable of so much more than I ever thought possible. I continue to do things at each level that I really did not know I was capable of. And so at each level, <clears throat> I get to see a newer, bigger, better version of myself. And, and I, I, I really just didn't know that existed. At the same time, <laughs> A surprise that I got was that each level feels scary. You know, I thought you went through the fear once, but you really do go through it at each level. And each level brings up the deeper subconscious beliefs that you didn't know were there. But the beauty of it is you get to see yourself do something you never thought you could do. There's nothing like that. Big surprise. Um, there's a lot of there's a, there there's a lot of things running through my mind right now. It's a great question, and I would say for myself, every time I've up leveled, um, what comes up for me right now is just I would say, on some level, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> because because um, I meant I really meant what I said this morning that when you make the decision today to up level, to, to become famous in your niche market, or to go to that next level, or whatever it means to you, um, if you really mean it, and you really set the intention, and you really walk your walk and talk your talk, it happens quickly. It happens so quickly. And, then, and that's the biggest surprise, is that if you set a plan in motion today, that here's what I want to happen six months down the road, and here's exactly how I'm going to do it. Here's how I'm going to do it. Here are the steps I'm going to take. The biggest surprise to me was is that it actually happened, right? Because you just don't see that it's going to happen that quickly. So I think that was my biggest surprise is that you ask for something, and if you're really intentional about it and you really want it, it will happen very quickly. So I hope that's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> 